Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined here by Brendan and Jamie with their brilliant film Kushino.exe or Executioner, depending on which title you want to choose. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. Since she worked for us, we have all the necessary information self-reported. Communication will not be necessary. What's wrong with her? If you would start by taking the torqued screwdriver and popping open the back face. They think my reports have been incorrect, but they haven't. She's been withholding information. A digital organizer shouldn't have opinions on what they put in or leave out. Their job is to report. She is faulty. Please take the torqued screwdriver. But... Now. Brandon and Jamie... I, I don't know where to begin with your film. I, my life has changed after watching your film. I will never be able to use appliance the same way again. Uh, <laughs> I mean it. But <laughs> good to have you both here. Um, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a, a, a brief synopsis. Um, so uh, Kushner is a, a film about a kind of an IT tech uh, worker who um, is kind of tasked with uh, kind of executing or decommissioning old um, AI computers and robots. And it's about his journey through isolation and this loneliness. And he's able to find companionship with one of these AI computers, L, who's his, his kind of partner or his assistant in doing these, these roles. So um, it's about kind of his journey um, in this kind of dystopian future and what it looks like, uh, what a future with kind of this loneliness and isolation looks like. Well, I mean, uh... It was something you both co-wrote together. I'm curious about that journey. How do you co co-write a, a brilliant little masterpiece like this? But um, Jamie, wh where did the inspiration come for you both in, in creating this story? Yeah. So the, the story of this is, is pretty fun because me and Brendan decided we just wanted to write a short film together. Um, and we kind of thought, let's give ourselves a bit of constraint and maybe that'll spark an idea. And so we decided to both go off separately and using the constraint of just setting a film in one location, which we said was a white room, which we thought at the time would be a super easy location to get in for production. Um, didn't turn out to be that way, but at the time we thought, right room, come up with an idea, come back, and then we'll kind of just go from there. And so we each came up with an idea. Um, this was kind of the one that Brendan came up with, the seed of that, and then together we just kind of really broke the story and, and elaborated and, and wrote this short. Uh, it was, I mean, you know, it's so funny, but guys, because honestly, when I watch it, I'm like, I cannot believe no one has made this before. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just brilliant, you know? And, and I, I again, I'm not trying to go too deep into it, but it, you know, I do feel like we're in this very disposable kind of world and, and, and it, and it feels kind of gross at times that we've become, these consumers, you know, and the way we treat things and look after things. Was there any element of that that kind of filtered in, in in the writing of that? I mean, you know, the morality of it, or was it pure fun? Like, I'm just very curious. Yeah, I think it definitely, I think something that I feel like we were both kind of connected over was like the isolation and the loneliness. I feel like everyone feels at some point in their life. I think like no matter how big your family is or how many friends you have or um, like how, how often you're surrounded by people at, at some point in your life, you always feel lonely. And I think that was the kind of a theme that we knew would connect with a lot of people. So we kind of wanted to build a world and see what would it be like if everyone in this world was lonely or it was kind of at your lowest moments, like what would that world kind of look like? And so I think um, in terms of like the computers and the, and kind of the world building of that stuff, that definitely did play into a big part of that. But I think at the core, we wanted to make sure that we had a character that we felt was relatable and that a lot of people could connect to. And I, I would add, I would add to you that I think not necessarily disposable in the way that you've mentioned, but the disconnected nature of the world, I think that we we live in or seemingly, I, I mean, in growing up for both of us, technology has boomed. And I think you do start to see a, a kind of a disconnect in terms of personal and interpersonal um, kind of relationships with people. And I think that is definitely something we were trying to hit with this story in terms of his relationship to other people and his relationship to technology and AI and what um obviously it is uh, it is a sci-fi so it's not where we live in now but kind of using that context and that world to kind of comment and make a reflection yeah, and to on, extrapolate too yeah and to extrapolate on what we kind of see today well i mean i'm glad you hit on that point jamie because you know there is such a disconnect even though we're advancing so quickly in technology and it was very sad to to kind of you know and i'm going to go into your your, your lead actor who was brilliant um, it was so sad to see this essence of loneliness because he wanted to communicate. He wanted to communicate. He was begging for communicate with someone to, 
interact with on a human level, but all he was getting it was it through this, obviously through this machine. Um, tell us a little bit about the journey about choosing your actor because he, he really did give a fine performance, you know, with this as well. Yeah, Andrew did a really great job. I, I think it was kind of like, we, I, it was a pretty basic, I guess, casting like process, I think. I think it was funny because at first, I guess it's like, admittedly, I think at first I, when I saw Andrew, I think I, he was like not my top choice or my first choice. And like kind of going back through the tapes of like through the audition process, like going back, we kind of kept going back to Andrew and we kept saying like, wow, he does have something kind of behind his eyes that I felt like was quite like lonely and quite intimate. And that like, I feel like there was something about him that we just kind of fell in love with over like, over like a couple watches. And then we knew that like we had him back again. And like, once we locked him in, then like bring him on kind of for the rest of the casting, we wanted to kind of build the cast around him. And so like we had um, Elle who was played by Nicole, who's wonderful. We had her on set. And so the two of them would, even though she was just a voiceover and playing like the computer, like she was on set the entire time. We wanted to kind of treat it like it was a conversation between two people at like a cafe or something like that. So having that kind of chemistry and that relationship in the room, I think really helped and both with both the performances. And I think that like definitely couldn't, couldn't have done it without both of them there. To add, I think in terms of casting, um, obviously Brandon just kind of touched on Andrew, but I think one of the interesting conversations we were having in terms of casting early on was, do you make this L character a human voice? Do you make it kind of a, a Siri voice where it's human-like, but there's some kind of intonation changes or do you make it very um, robotic sounding? And we could have kind of gone any of the ways and you've seen, I mean, a movie like Her is kind of one of the references we took in terms of making the AI sound very normal. And I think by doing that, um, it, 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 it really did help on set because like Brendan mentioned, Nicole was on set and it wasn't, it wasn't, nobody was line reading um, to interact with Andrew. Um, it was just Nicole off screen and she was actually recording into a microphone, which is the final takes we used. So she, her performance is being impacted by Andrew's performance and vice versa, which I think was a really interesting kind of way to go through production. Um, but I think definitely helped them both, especially. Yeah. I mean, it was emotional. I mean, I'll be there. I can't, I, I will never cut a wire again. Goodness me. <laughs> you know, so the fact the voice had a very significant part to it. And, you know, it really was, I mean, again, I mean, no humans really felt this way. I, yeah, I think I, I did have tears in my eyes, guys. I'm not even going to joke, joke, joke about it. <laughs> It was emotional. It really was. It was just, it was on different levels of loneliness of all those different things. Um, so you really cut the heartstrings, excuse the pun. But anyways, I, uh, <laughs> but I, I want to add from a production value. And of course you said it was a little bit trouble trying to find this room and everything else. You did create this world for us. Like I was so, you created a world for us where I was like, I was desperate to find out what was going on behind those doors and, and what could be further and what was going on. Uh, was that kind of the effect? How was that process for you? And also the building of all the kind of machines as well that you kind of created, it was really effective. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. It, it was definitely interesting because I know that it's like uh, under a budget, I feel like a science, like if you were making a drama film, I feel like a lot of ways it's like set in contemporary, like just in like in America or wherever you are in Los Angeles, it's quite easy to just kind of shoot the film and not to worry too much about like the world breaking. And so with uh, sci-fi and science fiction on a budget, it's always tricky to kind of like know where like the corners meet and try to make it seem like there's a lot more to the world. And so that then, then we're able to actually show, which is always kind of the challenge. So I think like for sure, it was definitely trying to like find those places where you could kind of cheat things and make it seem like you have more production value than I guess you're able to afford, which is always hard, but um, it was definitely a fun process. And I think something that I'm very, would love to kind of work and do more science fiction in the future, because it was very interesting to kind of figure out what worked and what we would have to kind of cheat and stuff like that it was really interesting. Yeah. What was, what would you say, uh, again, from whether it be pre-production, post-production or during the actual making of the film, what was the biggest challenge you had that you faced? <laughs> I would say probably the white room, right? Like, it's like, it's funny. Cause it's like, it seems like, I mean, we're in a, we're in a white room right now and probably would have been useful for the time of shooting. But like at the time we were in college and we were just in dorms and we didn't have any access to any rooms that like were pure white. And there was a couple of like locations that we were looking at to try to find like a, like a, just a room that would work, but it, none of it had like the kind of like we kind of wanted like a room that seemed kind of almost holy or almost like uh, like sterile and is the word we kept kind of throwing around. And so we ended up finding out that just probably the best way to do it was just like literally build it. So we just, we thought, at the time. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. So um, Brandon Marsh, who's one of the other producers, he, his grandparents loaned their tennis court to us, which is super nice. So we built a bunch of flats, painted them all white, stuck them together and then built this room 
um, just on their tennis courts. So it was just outside. And basically we did it the week prior to shooting, which was uh, a whole, basically the entirety of our spring break we spent <laughs> building this little room outside. So, which was a lot of fun until it started uh, the week. We basically built it the week before. And we're like, oh, like it's not, it's LA, it doesn't rain. It'll be fine. We'll just leave it outside and throw a tarp over it. And then of course that week before we started shooting the whole thing, like it poured the entire week. And so we end up losing like, oh, a good chunk of the, uh, <laughs> a good yeah, chunk of the room. It, it was definitely a shout out, first of all, to, uh, to all the friends of ours that helped us and sacrifice some of their spring break to build that room yeah. with us. <laughs> definitely would not have happened without them. Um, but yeah, once we kind of just banked on the weather and that was a lesson learned for the both of us <laughs> because we had, the room has a partial ceiling around all the sides of it. Um, and when it rained, that whole ceiling fell in and it got waterlogged floors and everything. And so the way we shot this film was we had three days of production and the, 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 it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Saturday, Sunday was when we were shooting in the white room. Um, and it was just a Saturday was all the kind of other locations. And so on Friday, as we started the day, we kind of, we, as the day kind of got going, then me and a couple of other people jumped over and literally rebuilt the ceiling and the, the floor and everything. Um, like as we were shooting, as we were shooting <laughs> elsewhere and then kind we of went, building the rail ahead of the train as it's moving. <laughs> and we, we, I think the timing, we finished up at 4.30 in the morning after building all night and then went to sleep for two hours, woke up at 6.30 for an 8 a.m. call time in the white room itself. Um, and we did, it, hopefully it sells. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, definitely the, the room itself, I think was probably some of the biggest challenges for this whole shoot. Yeah. So, so now that's why we asked that question. I mean, who would have believed it? Uh, well, I mean, who would have believed you filmed it on a tennis court as well? That was <laughs> and, and of course, that one week when it rains in LA. Um, but I mean, listen, guys, that's why you'll be safe having multi-million budgets because you just make the show go on no matter what happens, whatever you're caught with. So, so let's put that out there to the universe. But no, well done on that, honestly. Um, now, you're obviously a terrific team working together. I think it's very special when you find someone, particularly when you co-write with, that you can kind of, you know, end up creating a film together. So I'm just curious, what's next for you together and individually? Um, well, together, we've been writing a um, kind of a podcast series uh, with the third person, Lily Norris. So the three of us have been all working on this podcast series um, that we're hopefully at some point would like to make into a TV, like a TV series, a limited series. But it's a, a, a mystery thriller set in Ireland, which we're really excited about. And uh, I've been writing a couple pilots uh, on my own in my free time if I can. So, yeah, and then obviously we're working on that project together, and we've produced that. We we've worked on I think over nine projects now <laughs> together in various capacities, um, writing partners, producing partners, and obviously the frequent collaborators. Um, but then on my end too, I independent producer and line producer, so I'm kind of just working on a few different projects um, in that sense as well as doing the writing. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, you're 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 a great team. Well, listen, you had a few hiccups, obviously, with with this, you know, in the in the making of this film. But look what you executed. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I promise. Um, so I'm just I'm just curious for any for what I mean. You're very early in your careers, and you're already doing so well. But what, what is there any kind of advice you could share with with filmmakers out there that you could share that maybe you go by in, in, on your journey as a filmmaker? I think, I mean, for me, I, I think filmmaking is such a collaborative medium, obviously, but I think really finding the people that you can go through a crazy process, like rebuilding a room until 4.30 in the morning and still have fun doing it. Um, I think that's a really key element. And obviously that goes into just being, like, I, I think put out the energy that you want and, and you will, kind of get attracted to people and people will attract your kind of energy and your skill and, and your craft. And I think um, really finding those people and, and working on projects with people is how you make lifelong friends, um, but it's also how you make the best movies because everyone can tell if, if you've enjoyed a project and you put the passion into it, it's a, usually a better result than a set where everyone's kind of ready to go home. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, and jumping off the collaboration, I agree. I think. Um, something I learned on this film and I think definitely kind of like in the films that we've done since then, I think uh, the sets that have been, I think the most enjoyable for people have been the ones where 
the, the department heads and the key collaboratives have been brought into like the storytelling process and like kind of crafting the story and the world and stuff from a, a, is like an early point. So I think the, the, the people like if you're able to work on a set or on a project where you're involved in the actual telling of the story more so than just, oh, I'm just shooting this project or I'm just editing it and that's kind of it, like being able to be involved in that storytelling process because I think at the end of the day most of us are in this industry because we love telling stories and so being able to be as collaborative as possible with the scripts and with kind of how something should be shot or how the characters can react or what they're wearing or how does that affect the world I think is something that everyone really loves to be a part of and it just makes the the, the film an overall better film and the experience uh, a lot more rewarding. Absolutely no both really fantastic points well listen I'm looking forward to seeing both your individual and 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 your collaborative work but but thank you for bringing this film to us. I, I honestly want more of it. So if there's any talk of a feature or anything to go into this world, you know, uh, put it out there because it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's funny. We haven't really discussed much of like an extension of this world, but I think I, and Charlie and then the characters, I think are people that we enjoyed writing and definitely would be interested in revisiting for sure. Yeah, most definitely. So now, now that I know my coffee machine's got feelings, you know, so it's... <laughs> Praise the game. Uh, but no, thanks both very much. Thanks for bringing your film to New Filmmakers LA. Um, so thank you both, uh, Brandon and, and Jamie. Really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you so for much. having us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome.